Thank you guys for coming today. Um, I always like to start off by asking people why they came. I mean, why would you want to come to a workshop on recycling, you know, and staying green? So what was, what was the reason you're interested in recycling, sir? <laughs> did I get anybody for a second going, where did I come to? I always see the looks like, he's kidding, right? So I, I do recycle though, really. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm an avid recycler. Yeah, yeah. Stay green. So I like to recycle this stuff though, that's what I like to recycle, right? So everybody know, for those of you who came in a little later, do you know how many pounds of body fat this is? What would you say? Five. Two, five. Two, five. Any other guesses? Ten. Ten. Yep, five was right. And this is the actual volume of that. So five pounds of good old body fat. Now we don't call it, we don't call it body fat, guys. I never want to hear you say it's fat. We like to call it potential energy, okay? Waiting to be burned, right? Anybody here have any extra potential energy? <laughs> I would say, I do too. Um, so I call my workshops the restored body workshops because the idea is uh, most bodies are, are a little banged up. Just like a body shop works on cars, you know, they get dents and things, you gotta pull the dents out and do all that. Well, the way we do that with our bodies is from inside out, but our culture is more of an outside-in kind of fix, especially with weight loss and fitness and things like that. And uh, what I want to talk to you tonight uh, is about theories that don't work and things that actually do work. And it'll probably be a little bit different than you're used to hearing about. So uh, my background is I'm a chiropractor. I got out of school in 2001 and I started doing pretty uh, basic chiropractic work, structural work, adjusting the spine and extremities. If it was stuck, you make it move. If it moves too much, you strengthen it so it doesn't move so much. Pretty basic stuff. And I worked a lot with athletes, dancers, and swimmers, and uh, semi-professional, even professional. And I thought that's where I was going. I was going to be on the sidelines of some sporting team. And, and then I moved to a place called Placerville. And that didn't quite fit the model that I was expecting. And I guess I didn't do my homework enough. So what I did find, there were a lot of sick people up there and in that county. And then I started realizing the Sacramento area is not the healthiest of places. And so I had my work cut out for me. And I started getting a lot more people with diabetes and heart disease and cancer. And, and uh, right off the bat, I had a few patients die of those things. And I go, well, I'm just a chiropractor, you know, that's why they have a cardiologist and an endocrinologist and a, you know, an oncologist. Uh, but what I found was that wasn't working out too well for people. And at best, it was keeping them alive, but they weren't having much quality of life. And so I started doing a little bit of work with nutrition, a little bit of work with supplementation, stress reduction techniques. And what I started finding was people's blood pressure would drop, their cholesterol would drop. They'd start losing weight, they'd start sleeping better. And uh, pretty soon I wised up to say, well, if I tell people that I could help them sleep better, lose weight, and have less pain, it's probably a little easier from a business model than telling people, let me straighten out your spine and all your problems are gonna go away. Not that chiropractors think that, but sometimes um, when you only have one thing you do, you gotta do it almost perfect and then you gotta hope. What I mean is if, um, if you have a problem and you go to a nutritionist, what are they going to do to get you well? Talk to you about nutrition. Talk to you about nutrition. If you go to an acupuncturist, right? Acupuncture. If you go to a medical doctor, what it usually happens? Right script. Prescriptions. And some lifestyle changes, but really, not to, to be negative in any way, but you know, you get your prescriptions. Uh, you go to a surgeon, I bet you they're going to talk to you about surgery. So there's nothing wrong with how any of those things work. That's normal. If you get health insurance, you got to know it's not to get you healthy, it's for them to make profit. So it's all our thinking. It really is. And some people get so frustrated with insurance and pharmacology, and, but remember they're businesses. So healthcare in America is business. So what I want to do is separate the business part and I want to talk to you about how you get well, whether you ever spend a penny in my office or not, or a penny here or not. So I like to talk first about stress. Anybody here stressed? Raise your hand if you have stress right now. Okay. Well, not right now. So either people don't want to raise their hand or they really don't think they have a lot of stress. So what are some sources of stress right now? What are some examples of stress? Life changes. Life changes? What else? Christmas. Christmas? Holidays. Holidays. Bosses, employees, money, not enough money. 
uh, injury, those kind of things. So those are good examples of emotional stresses. Okay, so that is one category of stress. Um, there's more categories, and that's what I'm going to talk to you more about, because that's where people are more neglecting or being mismanaged, the other sources of stress. Because one thing, a stressed body will not burn fat very well, it won't rebuild muscle very well, it won't sleep very well, and it hurts a lot, right? So by those definitions, you know, everybody here is probably stressed in some way. So we have other sources of stress. Anybody here of internet, wireless internet, uh, cell phones, anybody here have a cell phone, ever used one of those? Um, alternating currents, all the wiring in the walls, <laughs> fluorescent lighting, uh, what else? Um, satellite waves, radio waves, TV waves, all that kind of thing. Those are sources of electromagnetic pollution, okay, and that's a, a stress. Then we have toxicity. Anybody know what, where we get toxins from? Like what are toxins? Food. Medication, Everything. food additives, food colorings, air. burnt <laughs> diesel fuel in the air, mercury in the water, fluoride in the water, fluoride in your toothpaste. No fluoride toothpaste, people. I don't want to hear the whole, well, I'll get cavities or quit eating sugar. Okay, fluoride is very toxic to your thyroid and to your body. It's one of the most toxic ions there are. Fluoride and chloride. What's dumped into your water? Fluoride and chloride. So that's why we run it through the Brita or the reverse osmosis and we try to pull those things out. So what do we got? We have emotional stress. We have chemical or toxicity. We have electromagnetic. What about structural stress? Anybody ever fall down a flight of stairs? <laughs> no? Get rear-ended? Football injuries? Football injuries, right? <laughs> um, those things manifest themselves and usually we could work them out, but they're sources of stress. Anytime we have scar tissue, our brain gets stressed out when you move that joint because it doesn't want you to re-injure it. So it kind of heightens the state of awareness. So we got four stresses, we got a couple more. Uh, nutritional stress, what sources of nutritional stress? Refinement, right? You take a whole grain and you turn it into powder and then you glue it back together with the synthetic vitamins. It's not really good for the body. Some people are allergic to gluten. Some people are allergic to uh, corn, soy, pasteurized cow's milk, things like that. Um, what else? We have, um, we talked about the food chemicals and things like that, but really low quality food, foods that are killed, not live anymore. Overcooked proteins, real toxic on the liver, okay? So those are sources of stress that I like to talk about because the goal is for everybody to understand that your body is more stressed than you realize, okay? And, uh, and I'll, I'll give you some tips today on how you can start removing some of those stresses and your bodies will start responding the way you would like, okay? Body types, do you all have one of these? Raise your hand if you need one of these. Okay, just steal it from the person in front of you, they won't mind, just grab it. Um, I like to talk about body types. And uh, it's a good visual, and basically um, we don't discriminate. Men can be adrenal and thyroid. They probably can't be ovary, with some very rare exceptions. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, but. You have four main body types that I like to talk about. The distortion is from left to right. Okay, so the healthier an adrenal body is, it's going to be very thin and fit. As the, the, the adrenals get weaker or more stressed, you'll distort. The body distortion is going to be that lovely belly fat, that loose, saggy, waistline belly fat that even if you lost 50 pounds, it doesn't go away. Okay, anybody here ever heard of that belly fat? You have a cousin, a neighbor, or a distant relative who has it? Yeah, most of us don't deal with those kind of things, but we know people. <laughs> symptoms of the adrenals. What are the symptoms of the adrenals? These are the insomnia people. Who here can't sleep at night? Okay. What time do you like? Three o'clock? Four o'clock? Well, What's your time? I'll tell, I've been diagnosed with stage seven adrenal fatigue. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't even know there were that many stages. Uh, well, I didn't either. I mean, Holy I was cow. going down. I was yeah. going down. I'm doing really good now. Good. But I packed on a whole bunch of weight in the process. Sure. But I was logging two hours a month, and I was I didn't know what day it was. I was going to work on Saturday or Sunday. Gotcha. And man, I was so this bad. lady doesn't sleep good. Who else doesn't sleep good? Anybody else? Everybody sleeps great. Okay. So insomnia is the main component of adrenal fatigue. What about chronic joint pain? Yes. Who here has the inflammation? Anybody have something that they hurt 20 years ago and it still hurts today? Chronic pain in the joints. Allergies. Food sensitivities, who's got the hay fever and the, you know, the sniffly nose and the sinuses and they're allergic to the summer stuff, they're allergic to the winter stuff, they don't know what they're allergic to. You know, if you, you think about now, see your nose just started to run thinking about it, right? <laughs> Start sneezing. Um,